site, get what we need. And this is this week's Closet Classic. Home show. I'm Steve Nugent. I'm glad you could join us today. If you saw last week's show, it was a beginner's course on starting off with basic arm strikes and punches and kicks. Uh, we went real slow. If you didn't see last week's show, that's okay because we're going to kind of pick up where we left off and do a quick review on what we did last week. Uh, what we're going to try to do is do a type of show where you can follow along with it at home. So I'm going to go real slow so, in case you've never done it before, you'll be able to follow along. In the weeks to come, as soon as next week's show or the week after that, I'm actually going to tape one of the classes with the other students in it taking a class. Um, that would also give you an opportunity to follow along at home if you want to, but if you were to just watch that show, you maybe kind of lost it first with all the different hands so I can how fast it's going and whatever else. So tonight what I'm going to do is explain everything nice and slow, go over everything in detail, so that if you do follow the next week's show, you'll have an idea at least of what I'm talking about or what I'm saying. First thing I want you to do is get up off the couch and just stand in a comfortable stance with your feet a little bit more than the shoulders width apart. All right. Now, what I want to try to get tonight is some conditioning done and some cardiovascular work, meaning getting the heart pumping, get the blood rushing. If it's too much, feel free to just take a break and stop, rewind the VCR and then watch it again, but go at your own pace. So what I want you to do is this, bend the knees. So the quadriceps are getting worked a little bit. The quadriceps are the big thigh muscle. Right? If you feel good with it, you can go lower. The lower you can go, the more stretch you can get out of it, the more intensity it will put on the quadriceps, the harder the workout. If it begins to be too much, just simply come up. So for today, I'm going to have you start with a comfortable stance, though, just so the knees are slightly bent, and you'll feel a little burn on the quadriceps. First thing you're going to do is you're going to work on jabs, very common, simple strike. I want you to put your hands up on guard, just as if you were a boxer, so your hands are up. Your hands are in a fist. Tuck the thumb under the index and middle finger and squeeze. Don't squeeze too tight yet because we're going to be doing a lot of repetition so you can keep your hand kind of loose if you want. Your guard is up. Every time I say go, that's your cue to throw a strike. You're going to start with either your left or right hand. It doesn't really make a difference. As it comes out, I want you to rotate it over so that at full extension, the palm should be facing down. It then retracts on the same line that it went out on and comes back to the guard. So let's just go over that one more time. The hand starts in the guard position, hands up by the side of your head, knees are bent. You're going to rotate out, it gets the full extension, it then pulls back. Like any proper exercise, you want to breathe as you do it. So on the next one, I want you to just simply exhale as you punch. Then I'm going to say go, you get to throw your other hand, you're going to alternate back and forth. So then throw the left hand, rotate it, breathe, and come back. Let's try that again. Push it out, go, pull it back. Go, push it out, pull it back. If you feel you've got the mechanics of it, the basic idea of what you're doing here, 
start to pick up your speed a little bit. Push it out, pull it back more like a jab. Push it out, pull it back. As soon as you start to push it out, I want you to think about your retraction. So don't let it go out at 100 miles an hour and pull it back at 50. If it goes out at 100, try to get it to come back at 200. It goes out, and it's back real fast. That's what the jab is, very fast, sticky type strike. So you're pushing it out, pulling it back, pushing it out, pulling it back, push it out, pull it back, push it out, pull it back. Very good. That's your jab. What we can also do to get a little bit more cardiovascular is instead of throwing onesies, meaning we're throwing one back, one back, we're going to do a triple set. We're going to throw three of them. You're going to throw right, but then instead of pulling it back, as it comes back, I want you to throw your, your second one, your left. Let's do that one more time. The right, this one pulls this one out, left, and then a third one, right. So I'm always coming from my guard, and I'm throwing right, left, right. Let's try that a little bit quicker. You're going to breathe again on all three. So it's right, left, right. Now it's going to be left, right, left. Left, right, left. Add your breath. There's three. Try it again. Go. One, two, three. One more time. One more. Go. Good. So now you're doing triple jabs. Right, left, right. Left, right, left. All right. We'll try to still maintain our stance. The legs are starting to get a workout here. The big muscle groups in the body is making us cardiovascular. Those are jabs. So in the, in the shows to follow, when you hear me call up jab, go, 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 you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. The next one we're going to go to is the hook punch. Your hook is probably the most difficult to get nailed down, I want you to understand. This takes months and years to develop a good hook. So if you're not getting it on the first show, don't worry about it, you, you shouldn't be. Your power always comes from the floor, your feet. Your legs are your biggest muscle groups in the body. That's where you're trying to generate your body. Your legs is much stronger than your arms. Your body weight, all 100 pounds of you, or 200 pounds, whatever you weigh, is much stronger than just one arm, okay? When you throw your hook, you're going to shift all your weight to one foot. The other heel goes up. So I'm not even really concerned about the arm strength right now. See if you can just do the footwork. You shift your weight to one foot as I turn, and the other heel goes up. It's kind of like I'm putting something out. Okay, I'm just twisting it. Like I'm squishing a bug on the floor. Okay, so you step and you squish the bug. That's kind of the phrase you always hear. Now, from here, you shift the weight, you crack your hips from this wall to the opposite corner, and you squish that bug. Let's go to the right foot again. Squish the bug. Bang. Turn. The faster you can turn, the more power you'll get on your hook. Okay? So if you've got that, we're now going to add the hand strike. We're shifting the weight. My elbow is going to stay in line with my ribs. Okay? Here's where most people make the mistake on the hook. They take their arm strength and go like this. Oh, that's not a hook. I'm not using my leg. My arm hardly does any of the motion. I keep my elbow tucked in on my ribs. I push. My whole body comes across on my hook. So you're feeling the power of my entire body weight and not just my arm strength. Okay? I don't want to spend too much time on this because you're not going to get this on the first night. It takes a little coordination, but you've got the basic idea. Use the legs. Let's just try a couple of these so you can try it. Shift the weight, bring the torso across. Shift back. Shift back. Go. Now you can notice also that after one strike is done, that becomes my guard hand again. So I always want to have at least one hand up on guard as I hook. Go. 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 Those are hooks. Okay? Getting a chance to work the abdominals through the twisting. Okay, like doing a trunk twist. It also works the quadriceps from pushing, as well as the shoulder and chest coming across. We're then going to go to our uppercut. Same principle as the hook, except instead of coming across, the uppercut is going to come up. Same idea, though, because I'm using my leg strength a lot. You're in your stance. Feet are spread apart, knees are bent. We can't use our arm strength. We've talked about this. I can't go like this to come up under the chin for my uppercut. I've got to use my legs. 
what I'm going to have to do to get under his chin is not bring my hand down, because that's only giving me the power of just my small bicep here compared to your leg. All right? So to get this lower than his chin, I've got to drop my stance down. I now lift up from my uppercut. So you're going to drop and then punch up. This is why karate, kickboxing, boxing is such great exercise because it incorporates such major muscle groups. You're dropping, pushing up. Drop, uppercut. Drop. This starts to work the thighs as well as the rear or the glutes. We're going to do, let's just say we do 10 reps tonight. As you start to feel comfortable with this, you could do two sets of 10 or one set of 20 or two sets of 20. Feel free to go for high repetitions on this exercise. These are uppercuts. Come up, push with your leg. Come up, let your legs do all the work as you push into it. Okay? Uppercuts. So, you've got your jab, the triple jab, one, two, three. You've got the hook. You've now got the uppercut. We're going to put a little combination together here, a hand combination. What I want you to do is put your left foot forward and your right foot back if you're right-handed. If you're a lefty, it can be just the opposite. Put your right foot forward and your left foot back. So for now, let's just pretend that we're all righties. Okay? I've got my left foot forward my right foot back. This is now more my fighting stance. And what I want to do is get you to stay up on your feet. I'm just kind of shifting my weight from left foot to right foot. Left foot to right foot, and I'm just bouncing back and forth. I want to try to be light on my feet so I can move around if I had to. I'm in my fighting stance. I can shift left foot forward to right foot back. And I'm just in a nice, comfortable stance, bouncing back and forth. My guard is up. Keep going. It's almost like jogging. This should start to get you cardiovascular. You should be breathing, and your guard is up. You're going to go back to the original jab. As you're bouncing, you're going to step a little bit. Throw your jab. Pull back. So I'm in my bounce. Your left foot, your lead foot, step, jab, and pull back. You're going to step, jab, pull back. Like I said, we're going to do a combination with this. So try not to lose this. I'm gonna, this is going to get a little quick, but we're going to try it anyway. Left foot step. You got the jab. Now throw your right hand. So you're getting what they call the old one-two. You've probably heard that phrase before. That's it right there. The jab and the right cross. So we're in our fighting stance. Our guard is up. You're going to step. One, two, left, right. Ready? Guard up. Again. Left, right. Again, one, two. Left, right. Now, we're going to get a three-punch combination. So we're going to add the hook. You're going to throw left, right. Now bring the left hook across like you worked earlier. You turn, you pivot, you squish the bug as the hook comes across. Let's do that one more time. You're in your fighting stance. You're going to step. One, two, hook. Ready? Again, a little bit quicker if you're comfortable with it. Guards are up. Step. Hook. Ready? Again, one, two, three. Step. Hook. One, two, three. Now, we're going to go to the four punch combination. I'm going to go slow on this. You've got the one, which is the jab. The two is your right. The three was the hook, and we pivoted. Now, you can see my knees are still bent. So what this is going to let me do, it's going to allow me to untwist and push back up for the fourth strike of the combination, which is the uppercut. So we're going straight with the left, straight with the right. Come across to the side of the head with the hook. Now come back up and under to the chin with the uppercut. There's one of your most basic four-punch combinations. A jab, a cross, a hook and an uppercut. Now, get on to your bounce. Let's try a couple of those. Guys are up. You step. One, two, three, four. Again. Step. One, two, three, four. Breathe on each one as you do it. Again. Good. That's your one, two, three, four combination. As we do these in the, in the group, in the classes, you should be able to follow along with that. It looks fast. Just go at your own pace. Go slow. You don't have to have hands that are 200 miles an hour yet. Take your time. Now, we're also going to go to kicks. Before we do that, I want to stretch. Last week, you noticed we had a big stretch class. I'm not going to spend quite as much time on the stretching tonight, just for the sake of time. 
but we do want to stretch before we go to our kick. What I want you to do, take one foot, point it towards the wall. Push down on your hip so that you feel a stretch through the inner thigh or groin muscle. Good. Keep the back nice and straight. And switch. Point the other foot off to the side wall, down on the hip. Get that stretch through the inner thigh, groin muscle, good. Roll over so that your heel is up. This is kind of like being a sprinter in the sprinting block. So I've got my back straight. Don't lean over too far to take the stretch off the top of the quadricep, the hip flexor, right in the top of the hip is where you should feel this. And then switch, go to your other one. That's the hip flexor that you're feeling being stretched right there. Keep that leg nice and straight. Feel the stretch to the top of the thigh. Good. Now, sit right down on the floor. Spread your feet apart. As far as you can. And like I said last week, just go as far as you can. You're not going to get flexible in one week. It takes time. But every time you do stretch, try to go a little bit further. All right? So from here, like we did last week, reach out as far as you can. Try to get your head to touch the floor. Sit back up. Reach over, grab your right ankle. Relax into it. Exhale. Head to the knee. And switch. Bring it over your other knee. Very good. From here. Pull both feet together. Reach out as far as you can. Keep the legs straight. Try to reach out towards the toes. If you can, go out further and pull the heels up. You should feel this in the back of the knee, the top of the calf. Try and stretch out the calves on this. Very good. Now, stay like you are. I'm just going to turn sideways so you can see me at home. I'm going to go for a lower back stretch. Be careful on this stretch. Try to keep all your weight placed on the shoulder blades. Don't put any pressure on your neck. You're going to lift your legs up and over as far as you can and try to get to the floor. I should feel this in my lower back, which I do. All my weight is on my shoulders, not on my neck. You can see I can still lift my head. Very good. Back down. Put your left foot forward. Tuck your right foot back. We're going to stretch out the hamstring on this one. The hamstring is the muscle in the back of the leg. From here, re lean over. Try to think not just of going down, but try to think also of going out, long, and over as I stretch. Now we'll do our quadriceps. Lay back down as far as you can. If you can get to the floor, get to the floor. Back up, switch it. You've now got your right foot forward, and we're going to do our right hamstring. Lean over, head to the knee, reach out nice and long and down. And that gives you a nice stretch on that hamstring. Go nice and slow and smooth. Try to relax into your stretch. Lay back down, we'll do our last quadricep. Alright, put your legs together, you can get back up on your feet. Give your legs a quick shake out, get the blood back into them, because we're moving on to kicks. Last week I broke down the kicks real slow. I'll give a quick review on the kicks, but I want to get more into the actual workout. So if you saw last week's show, you have a better understanding of the mechanics of which kicks to be used and how they should be used. I will go over it again quickly this week, but again, I want to get into the workout, so I'm not going to spend all night showing you exactly how to do the kick. You will get this, though. Go back to that fighting stance. You have left foot forward, right foot back. Even left-handed people, I now want to have your left foot forward, right foot back, so we're all the same. All right? Guards are up. We're going to start with the front kick. We bring the leg up. The knee comes up. I extend it out two. I retract it three, and I step down four. So those are our four parts of the kick. The front kick comes up. One, two, three, four. Now, you're going to breathe out as you do it. So as I kick up, I'm kicking out 
and up as I front kick, and then back down. Bring it up, kick, back down. Bring it up, kick, back down. Again, go. Again, go. Good. Now, eventually in the classes, we're going to do this. We're going to go for obviously more repetition. But today we're going to go through them, throw a few of them, and the next week we'll increase. Throw five kicks, then try and throw ten kicks, fifteen, whatever it may be. Change your feet around. So now have your right foot forward, left foot back, guards are still up. Quick review, and he always comes up. One. We kick out two, we retract three, we step back down four. Try to put it together a little bit quicker and smoother. That's it. Go. Again. Go. Again. Go. Again. Go. Good. That's our front kick. We're then going to go to our side kick. This is the one that takes a little practice. Knee comes up. We pivot out on the support foot. We kick to the side, retract it, and step back down. Okay? Try it a little bit smoother, quicker. Bring it up. Side kick. Back down. Go. Back down. Go. Again. Go. Good. Turn your hands so you're changing your guards. So now your opponent or the guy you're fighting with or the guy you should be picturing is over here. Try to picture a body, person, your own size, weight, height, the whole nine yards. The leg comes up. We kick out towards them. We track and step down. Ready? Full speed. Go. Again. Go. Again. Go. Good. Now, we're going to go to our back kick. I'm going to turn sideways so you can see this. But you still have your left foot forward, your right foot back. Bring the knee up. One. Look behind you, kick straight back. Two. Retract three. Step down four. Ready? Go. Again. Go. Again. Go. Good. Change it around. Your right foot is forward. Bring the left leg up. Look over your left shoulder, kick back, retract, and back down. Ready? Go. Again. Go. Again. Go. Good. One more kick. Actually, two more. I'm going to try to get into the roundhouse kick tonight also. Our last one is the crescent. Left foot forward, right foot back. Extend your left hand. What I want to do is give you a target to look at. This kick's a little bit different. It doesn't have the the four parts or that straight mechanical line that the front kick, the back kick, and the side kick have. This one comes right from the floor, makes a circle, okay? So it helps if you have a target at the peak, which is going to be your hand. So extend your hand, the other hand itself is a guard. Bring your leg all the way around, lightly tap your hand, don't kill your hand and break your own hand. Go low at first if you want to, bring the leg around, just hit it, and bring it back down. As you feel more comfortable, go a little quicker, bring it around. What we're trying to do is aim for the side of the head. Go. Again. Go. Again. Go. Again. Go. Good. Change your feet around. So the right foot forward, right hand extended, other hand on guard. Try your left crescent around. Go. Again. Go. Again. Go. Good. Now the last kick that we're going to go for is the roundhouse. This is one of the most popular kicks in karate. What I'm going to have you do is grab a chair or a wall or whatever you have for balance. So we're going to do this as an exercise, not just a kick. What you're going to do is put your hand on the wall. Take your support foot, which is going to be your right foot. Point the heels out. Okay. So I shouldn't have my foot parallel to the floor. My foot should be more perpendicular so that the toes are pointing into the wall. Okay? From here, my actual kicking foot is the left foot comes up. Okay? So that my knee is in a chambered position this way. It's very similar to the front kick, except instead of me kicking front ways, I'm kicking sideways. It's like doing a side front kick. Extend the quadricep, retract it, bring it back. Extend, retract, bring it back. This is working the obliques, the side of the abdominals, as well as the glutes 
in the quad. Let's go for five of these. Extend, retract. Go. Extend, retract. Try to put it in succession. One, two, three, four, five. Very good. Those are roundhouse kicks. Change your feet around. Put your other hand on the wall, like we talked about. The left foot, the support foot, the toe foot faces into the wall. Your kicking foot, which is your right foot, comes up sideways. We're going to extend, we're going to retract, and pull it back. Ready? We'll go for five. Go. One, two, three, four, five. Very good. Roundhouse kicks. We did five. Eventually, when you see the classes, we're doing 50, 100, whatever it may be. But the people that you see doing 100 didn't stop by doing 100. I started by doing five and just built into it. So go at your own pace. Like I said at the beginning, those are the punches and the kicks you'll need for the workout. We also want to do a little conditioning. We're going to do some push-ups as well as some abdominals. Okay. The first thing you're going to do is just go down onto your knees. Okay. On the push-up, there's a couple different ways you can do these. If you're just starting, you may want to keep your weight on your knees. Okay. And again, I'm going to turn sideways so you can see this. Lean forward. Put your hands right on the floor. You're on your knees and the hands. Bend at the elbow so that your chest comes down to the floor and then push up. You should feel this in the back of the arm, the tricep, as well as the shoulder and the chest. So I go down to the floor and I push up. If that's not giving you enough resistance, meaning you're saying, that's pretty easy, I can do this all day long, go up onto the feet so that now all my weight is now supported on the hands and the feet, my back is straight, my abdominals are tight, I bring my chest down to the floor, and then back up. Try not to let anything else touch but the chest. So in other words, I don't come down and I just drop so my legs hit the floor. When I'm in the push-up position, the down position, my legs are still off the floor. So they're not here like this. Your back shouldn't swoop. Try to keep your back straight, thighs off the floor, just the chest touches, and then back up. Let's go for five again. One, two, three, three, four, five. Very good. If you feel you need more, just keep going and try and do as many as you can. We're then going to go to our abdominals, which are going to be crunches. Now you do get to just lay right down on the floor. Okay? Keep your feet on the floor so the knees are slightly bent. Throw your hands right over your ears, and all I want you to do is try to sit up halfway. What's pulling me up is my stomach contracting. When those abdominals contract, they pull myself in. Okay? So my shoulders are coming up off the floor, my abdominals tr contract tight, and then I come back down. Like when we were talking about the whole show, breathing is important. You're going to exhale on the contraction. So come up, <sighs> exhale, back down, here's your chance to inhale. Again, exhale. Squeeze your stomach tight, back down, up. Now you'll notice that my shoulder blades are coming right up off the floor. I'm not just doing this, which a lot of people make a mistake on the crunch. They go like this. And it turns into a neck exercise where the head is just coming up off the floor. That's not doing anything for the stomach. I've got to contract the stomach so that the shoulder blades lift off the floor and my abdominals are nice and tight. Let's go for three more. One. Two, three. Very good. All right. Back up onto your feet. You've now done your cardiovascular work with all the punches and the kicks. We got some stretching. You did a new, two new kicks, the crescent as well as the roundhouse. You've now got the full arsenal for the karate or the kickboxing class. And we did a little conditioning, push-ups and sit-ups. Um, I'm glad you could join us today. I hope you can join us next week. We're going to feature a couple of actual full-blown karate and kickboxing classes. Try it at home. Try to stay with us. Do as much as you can. Have fun with it. That's the most important thing. Um, stretch. Be careful what you're doing. Don't push yourself too hard at the beginning. And we look forward to seeing you again next week. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.